Today we're going to talk about the Monsterverse, uh, was it Monsterverse, yes. which is a TV show, yeah. and it is the it is becoming, I guess, the connective tissue between a lot of the movies that you've seen recently: the Godzilla movie, Godzilla vs Kong, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and then Skull Island as well. So we're going to use the TV series as a launch pad to then also talk about the the movies as well, and we're doing it on this channel because. Well, one of the movies features Hong Kong. There's lots of uh, Chinese people in the movies. I would say they're tokenized. And there's, a, of course, some Japanese people. So they're all Asian. I'm in Asia. So let's do it on my Asian channel. Boom. Boom. That's my long intro. So, Adam, this is your idea. I binge watched the whole series and yeah. the movies in preparation for this. Did, have you seen them previously? Except okay. Godzilla vs. Kong. Right, okay. Yeah, cool. So I'm prepped. I've got my notes here. I think I have seen all the movies, just not recently. I saw the 2014 one recently because I watched it straight after oh, yeah. watching the series. For those that haven't seen Monarch, but maybe you've seen the movies, you can skip ahead. I'll put timestamps in if we're, to, we're going to talk about the movies at length. But the Monarch TV show is an Apple TV show where it's basically creating the genesis for the movie verse even though it's come out after the movies it's going backwards and doing a bit of backtracking to establish certain law characters behaviors and the monarch organization which are there to track and apprehend i guess air quotes apprehend the uh, the moot the massive extraterrestrial creatures so yeah and adam do you want to tell us why you watched monsters the the monarch tv show first i got into apple tv because of you so i watched apple tv and then i noticed that they had a lot of good tv shows that are already on there established so monarch was one of them that caught my eye because you know it's got monsters and stuff on it so i'm like oh big big shiny thing button with the thumbnail with a godzilla on it i'm like oh i'll, I'll get into that let's see what that's, this is about plus it's got a selling point it's got a big name in it little kurt russell so straight away i was like, okay it's sort of, you know, got some uh, validation about it by having a, a big name actor in it. Apple are obviously forking out, you know, some money for this. Uh, the effects when they do show the monsters are actually pretty decent. They're good, probably movie level quality, which is good. They're not, they're not on screen all the time because it probably costs quite a bit, I'd assume. But yeah, it got me into the series. I thought, let's, let's see what this is about. And the first couple of episodes I thought was okay. Let's see what this is. It's all right. It started out okay. But there are, there are a few niggling things, there are a few annoying characters and what surprised me about it is like I've watched, what else we've watched on Apple TV? We watched uh, Foundation. Foundation was like a quality sci-fi show so the writing, directing, all the characters, everything on that show was solid and I just sort of figured well that's the trajectory that Apple TV seems to be going on. I just sort of thought well maybe this would be the same sort of caliber or level of directing writing style, maybe it would be it'll be similar and obviously it's not on the same level as foundation but foundation there are season two, just yeah and, and half of there season are, one yeah th there are just you know no there's a few characters in this that, are, that annoy me mm. and mm. it does get a little bit preachy and they sort of go down the old tropes of you know the old woke brigade and it sort of kind of goes across the line of those sort of different camps that are about now in today's society you know like with the female empowerment and strong female characters and making guys look like idiots and do you want to go sh straight into the monarch series or just go straight into like the um, synopsis the story let me have a little summary at the beginning and then we can dig into it as well obviously when i saw you told me about it i think yeah and i thought okay a godzilla tv show uh, it isn't a Godzilla TV show, really. Yeah, yeah. It's it's all about the little people who are affected by Godzilla. I'm surprised you binged watched all of it so quickly. I was quite surprised when you, you told me you you watched it all straight away. So I was like, wow, okay. Yeah. Well, I can do that. I'm busy, yeah. but I can. I've got time to binge watch stuff. The, yeah, yeah. The writing, as you say, is we'll have to get we'll get more into it, but it does leave you lacking, and, and there's there's mm. missed potential with the characters, especially if they're going to do yes. multi series production on this i do like the idea and i do like the idea that it's going to be something that connects the movies together and establishes yeah. and creates more backstory because yeah you can see in on reflection how the movies not suffer but you want more and the way that all the movies mm -hmm. end there's no there's no closure it's just godzilla walking away and it's like okay movie's done and then yeah so yeah exactly so it's adding a little bit here and there sprinkling little things i like that mm -hmm. otherwise yeah if you want to start with the characters i found them so sort of cliche cli as soon as Cliché, as soon yeah, as i saw definitely. the 
the black lady in Japan. I was like, fuck. It's yeah. It's it's one of those where you've got to have token representation. Do you know how? Do you understand how how few black people there are in Japan? And then on top of I that, can imagine. how few black people probably speak Japanese, and are living yeah, there yeah. permanently. And then no computer programs. Like <laughs> you're picking like extremes to create a character that could have just been Japanese because it's already diverse enough. You didn't need to insert a black person and then a whole black yeah. family into it later later on in the show. And I'm just thinking, why can't it just be Japanese people? Yeah, and I it, found that really jarring. So you've got, obviously this show is set, there's two time periods in it. So there's two sets of different characters, you know, sets of groups of characters. I found the 1950s lot, that's when the first lots of it set is, they're a lot more tolerable, a lot more like I say, better written, or they have dialogue, they're interesting, they, they have jobs, they know what they're doing, they're sort of respectful to each other and stuff like that. Whereas our present day characters that are basically representative of our time period, they all, they're all idiots. They're just like, she's like up herself, the uh, May, is it? She's just completely up herself. That's the Japanese um, lady. The young Japanese lady. No, May is the, oh, yeah, the yeah, black yeah. lady. She she's just completely up herself. She knows she's so sure of herself. She's so cocksure. She's got this fake identity that she's over there because she's run away from her problems because that's what we do. And she just has no flaws or anything like that. She just can do everything. She knows computer programs inside and out. She can hack anything. There's just there's nothing that she cannot do. She can speak multiple languages. It's completely a farcical. And then the guy who she meets, who's going to be her like kind of on-off boyfriend he seems okay at the beginning it just whenever he interacts with her he's just an idiot so he just he's a complete dumbass all the time and he just says stupid things and he just cannot figure out the basic functions of being a human being it's just it's just so badly written it just it winds me up so comparing it to like the ones in the 50s it's just night and day because you're like well well they're cool but then you go to the present day and you're like well they're idiots it winds me up it's just so jarring to watch on screen and so annoying so i just want to pick apart some of that uh the characters from the 50s they all look and feel believable in a sense that yeah 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 it's it's post-war there are japanese people doing things mm. and i can believe i can believe that she's a researcher and a, and a scientist yeah, yeah. and then when you're in the the the, ni- the 2015s which is where the young people you're talking about that timeline is set they they don't seem believable where you can just like pick people that are sort of representative of for that story like i say the black character but may she should be a japanese person yeah i get it you know you've got like you've got the cultural diversity so it, it, it supposedly it makes for a better reading or it's more inclusive so more people will watch it although there's a certain irony that it's on only on apple tv but the believability you've got to make it believable for me to then get on board and i can't get on board with these characters the 1950 ones yes the 2015 ones no mm. and that boy the son not the son yeah the long Ken, Ken, kentro or his right. name is the stepbrother yeah that, that the other lady finds yeah he isn't even a character once they leave japan He's just he's just saying things to people. He just goes along with them. He's right. just tagging along. And he's oh my dad, my dad. And there's a, <laughs> there's a moment that another reviewer pointed out. So this is I'm not being clever here, but there's a moment where after they told May to fuck off because May betrays mm. them, the next episode yeah. is focused on them getting May back, and it's like why you told her to go away <laughs> and you stormed off across a desert to get away from her. I know. So trailing behind. Why do you care? what she's doing and there were so many points in the mo- in the 10 episodes where i just thought okay this would be a great time to for may to exit she doesn't need to like hang around because sometimes in yeah. movies and tv shows you've got characters that hang around because the, you haven't killed them off or you, you don't know of an, of an exit a way of, to get rid of them to you know to yeah. go just like kurt russell's character he's not even in it from yeah. the beginning he's in it no, no. in the sort of like later it's like the third episode or something and then he's in i it. think so right and then they give him an exit so they can do it for him so you yeah. could have done that for May many times. And I was like, great, she's gone. Oh, she's not gone. She's back. <laughs> she, oh, God damn. And then... She's a horrible character as well. Yes. Awful character. She, so so she's unlikable because of her actions. Yeah. And her personality. Because that whole betrayal thing amounts to nothing. Where she's... It's the, it's the betrayal thing. But then she also... <laughs> her whole her whole backstory, the, whole, the way she's written is absolutely horrendous. So she goes in this tech company is amazing. Obviously, the the headhunter, she's like, she's like an amazing headhunted 
person and she goes in this company she doesn't like her position in the company so she bitches about it she breaks all the fucking rules fucking costs the company like millions then decides to fuck off leaves her family in the lurch she goes oh i've got to run away now i mean to hell with all the consequences like what what's to stop the the corporation or whatever she's ran away from from threatening her family she just buggered off to like Hong Kong or Japan or wherever it wherever Japan. she went. Japan. Japan. And I'm just like, what the hell? What an awful, awful. And then her family's just like, oh, we're so worried about her. Yeah, it's but awesome. she saved she saved some animals, Adam. So she's entirely redeemed. But it's awful a good point. character. I didn't, I didn't realize that the company, considering how evil air quotes evil they are, they could have mm-hmm. ransomed her and threatened the family and got her back. Exactly. But the, the yeah. story doesn't allow for that at all. Yeah. It's so, it's so, I mean, so, it doesn't make any sense. Right. The whole thing in when she's walking past uh, Ken's exhibition. So you're taking a photo of her? Yeah. It's like, she's antagonistic all the way for everything. Just, yeah. okay, I get it. It's a bad breakup. But once you've accepted, why do you have to keep throwing shade at him? You accept yeah. him back into your life. Where's the reconciliation? Like should be... In an, an abusive relationship, this man. Right. Oh, that was the thing I was going to say. So, after they told May to fuck off, and then they get her back, mm. there's a moment where May is in the front of the car, and the Japanese lady, what was what's her name? The, the sister. Uh, Kate. 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 Rhonda. She, Kate, yeah. She puts her arm over the where she's sitting, as though they're lovers. Yeah. And they're yeah, doing yeah. it in front of Ken, but it's Ken and May that were trying to like date. But his own sister has basically stole his potential girlfriend from him. Yeah, he's like, oh, okay. It's CW drama, thought- and one of those writers, I think it's Amanda, and she hasn't got a link to her profile. I guess she's not big enough, mm-hmm. but she's the one that wrote this, this little angst it's and so- teen stuff. It's so annoying. When they ever switched to like 2015 period, I was like, oh, yeah. like I hated it because I'm like, I want to go back to the 50s or whatever because yes. it's just so much better. It's so much more interesting, and they have much more, they have better chemistry between each other. It seems more, like I say, believable. The dialogue's better. The chemistry's better. It's just like they're going to do something that's like has some tangible sort of like storytelling to it. It's just this is like Whoa. they have stuff going on. Whereas 2015, they just moan all the time. They're just moaning constantly. Well, the 50s, they're, they're, they're establishing Monarch. You want to know how Monarch was created. Here, yeah, yeah. They, they've just seen Godzilla. And then they're like, yeah, but where's dad? I love that. I love the fact that they, they, Godzilla came out the ground. They saw their dad look, and he's like trying to wave them off, like, or piss off because he knows what's coming. And then they're angry at him when he goes away. And it's like, well, what did you expect him to do? He wasn't going to come up the fucking mountain to where you are when there's a giant fucking thing coming out the ground. Okay, (sighs) I want to talk about the dad. I think we've done enough on May, but but I'm sure there's something else that'll pop up. But with the dad, and this this shows that I'm not just picking on a black woman, or we're not picking on a black woman. This dad is such a f***ing asshole. Yeah, the dad's horrible. And... And I'm jumping ahead, but in episode 9 or 10, I can't remember, he just turns up in the office. They spent eight episodes trying to find this fucker. And I'm thinking, well, I hope the reason's really good. Because I've watched TV shows in the past where they're trying to find a, a long lost relative and there has to be a justification for it to, to yeah. make me believe that this was valuable for my time and then he just turns up in the office and he's, he's like dad you're an asshole and he is he is an asshole yeah. because he hasn't the the, the the writing hasn't convinced me that he had a valid enough reason to abandon his two families oh yeah for the viewers by the way don't forget he's got two families he's been raising two separate families because for some reason. We don't know why. So I know, that's why for reasons. A, that's why there's a sister and a brother and they find each other because the sister finds out that they go to the Japanese dad's house and he's got another family living there and it's like, what the fuck? So what's it? Infidelity or something? But anyway, he's he's polyamorous with these yeah. two and lying about it. So what gets me is that the reason isn't valid and when he's waving them off and you're saying, okay, but quite rightly, he can't just drive up the hill and get them. He doesn't circle yeah, yeah. back. He doesn't. No, he just goes. He just, he's just gone. Yeah, both his kids are there, and that's it. I'm thinking he's got to come yeah. back. Surely he's got to come back. He's got to pick him up <laughs> instead of them walking across the desert. No, just fucks off to Japan. I think. Yeah. They get yeah, there before he just him. Goes. It's fucking weird, yeah. man. Very strange writing for characters. Right. In the, the modern in the modern day t- time period, it's very strange. At the end of the at the end of the the tenth episode, and his mum comes back. I'm thinking. How is he going to explain this? And I really wanted him to explain how he's got two families. Well, I've got mum issues, so I decided to ha- create two mothers who raised two separate <laughs> children. That's, two part-time <laughs> single-parent families. This is weird. Yeah, I felt I felt really bad for the the wives in this. I'm like, and wouldn't they be more angry? You think they just were like, oh, accept, accepting of it, like, oh, okay, oh well. Yeah. And speaking of part-time single mothers, 
Did you notice how many single parent families are in this TV show? If you want to talk about oh, work, you didn't notice. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So the Hiroshi Randa, she's raising a son by herself in the 1950s, a Japanese woman. Yeah. Right. Do you know how yeah. hard it is for Asian people to divorce? The shame involved in divorce is fucking astronomical. It's very is different why, to Western cultures. That's why she buggered off to America, isn't it? She just sort of probably. Kind of, but yeah, she yeah. takes on Bill Randa's name, so I guess they marry. Yeah, him. yeah. But you, you, you don't understand. Sometimes there are people who, who they they break up, but they don't divorce because they still want the name. They, mm-hmm. it's it's super. Yeah, as I say, it's just it's so shameful in the in the East. Yeah. And then the black family, air quotes family. There's no father. Did you notice? No. There's no dad. Yeah, yeah. They so, don't mention it. Yeah. So it's another single parent family where the mother is yeah. raising the children. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. It's very strange. It's really, like I say, it's just going from this, and it's on the same, you know, Apple TV, from from that, from that foundation to this, I'm like, it's really odd. Because I felt I accept the same, I expected the same sort of calibre in okay. show and writing. Do you know what I mean? I guess, I guess and, if you've been, but then are you comparing it to say what Marvel does and Disney does? Because that's kind of the same calibre. I suppose, yeah. Because you expect the same, because it's on the same sort of network or the same sort of streaming service. You think, okay, it's going to probably have the same sort of kind of creative team or like, mm. you know, along the same sort of lines the of standard. like standards, basically. But it just, I don't know. Like I say, it's like it's written by two different people, like because of the 50s stuff, good. And then you get to 2015, ah, bad. Yeah. It's, it's annoying because, it, like you say, the, it has so much potential. And I'd rather stay in 1950s and discover, like, what's going on there and the the creation of this you know massive mm. secret government organization that's devoted to finding the mutos you know that's that's interesting that's good yeah yeah it's not not melodramatic whatsoever it's not like oh and th- that them tr- tropes and around like deserts or like snow glaciers and like moaning about it the whole way going oh i don't like you and i don't trust you and you're like well, what, what? as if that would be on the forefront of your mind when you one and you're stranded in the middle of a desolate wasteland or a frozen arctic and you've got massive giant monsters the size of skyscrapers trying to kill you. Like, yeah, you'd be seriously moaning about problematic little dramas like that. Like, piss off, no. No, you wouldn't. The flashbacks to when Ken is, like, freezing in the cold, flashback <laughs> to when he was with May, it's like, oh, uh, yeah. I, could, I could skip this. It doesn't add anything to the characters. It just no. shows her being nice. Okay. And then she gets jaded. Okay. And then we're, we're dealing with that jadedness. The other character, Kate, by the way, if you want to move on. Yeah. She is oh, Kate. possibly one of the worst fucking characters. Yeah. Like Kate. spiteful, spiteful oh, Kate. Asian. Oh, that's, that makes it racist now. Shit, I've, I've outed myself. Fuck. Nice. <laughs> she's spiteful. She cheats on her girlfriend. So therefore she's a lesbian. She's mm. on a girlfriend and she can't even, when she finds out about the family, she just makes this whole song and dance to say anything but I'm your I'm your stepsister. You can't, yeah. The dialogue doesn't go directly. It's got to like... I mean, sometimes I understand you've got to keep up the prete- uh, the tension or the pretense of a story. You've got to hold hold on a little bit longer. But these people do not speak in real ways. If you were shocked no. that you've got a stepbrother, or if I was, I don't know about you, but I would be full of love for, for a stepbrother immediately. Yeah. Oh, well, this this happened and that happened and then shit. Well, yeah, yeah you'd, have, you'd, you'd have questions and you'd be like wanting to know. You wouldn't be like... Straight away go into anger. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the wrong house. We've got the key for the wrong house. It works. Like, I hate you. Who are you? Right. You're like, what the fuck? Who, who acts like this? Right. And and she's got the trauma from Godzilla attacking the bridge, which again was inserted in from the 2014 movie. Okay, that was fine because there were school bosses yeah. in that movie. Yeah. And she was on one of the less fortunate ones. Okay, fine. But then the mm-hmm. whole, oh, I've got a lesbian girlfriend. And then I cheated on her with a more ugly one. And that's what did you notice that's what lesbian uh, represents okay. when you when you say that though the school she was the school she was working at straight away it was like rainbow oh, everywhere yeah. rainbows everywhere rainbow floor <laughs> rainbow entrance rainbow it was like just to make sure letting the audience know that this is a gay school see that i was like i get it you're hammering at home show you don't have to i know i get it i don't care but i get it was there even that much uh, pride stuff in 2015? Because the, <laughs> the world so, no. went crazy when Trump got elected. And yeah. then there was this like left-wing reaction to this. So we've got to like pump out, pump up more gay pride stuff. I think there was gay pride, but not to that level. But No, I think, I think like 2015... The in the school. I think 2015 was still relatively normal-ish back then. I think we're still... Maybe online, you know. because we weren't in America. But no. 
Maybe. Maybe. Maybe in America, yeah, some schools were. No, TOT didn't exist, so that was a big that's thing. So San that's Francisco. caused a lot of damage. It is San Francisco, yeah. though. So it's like yeah. the epicenter of not just Godzilla's attacks, but fucking gay pride attacks. Oh my God. Yeah, but and it's, you know what? It's cliched that she cheats on the, her girlfriend with an uglier woman. There's something cliched yeah. about that with regards to the way lesbian relationships are set up. It's like, she couldn't have been more beautiful. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, fuck's sake. I know. I get it. And for those that think I'm so, railing against gay people, my uncle's gay. I used to work in a gay bar. Mm-hmm, we used to, mm-hmm. we live, Adam still lives in that city, in that town full of gay people. It's like gay people are just hanging from the fucking we used to the, like, the, yeah, the street lights I, in that place. The whole hotel, the whole hotel staff was gay. Right. I, don't, I don't care about that. Right. Like my dad worked with drag artists and stuff like that. He's in the entertainment thing. I, I don't care about anything like that. Like you can right. do what you want. I don't care. But when it's you, you're getting hit over the head in shows like this <laughs> constantly, it's it, there's no need for it. It's just have it be in there like organically and naturally without like you know telling the audience like, hey, look, look at this, look how gay I am. You don't I, have to do that. You don't. I worked, remember, in Funny Girls, a fucking drag bar. I know <laughs> what it's like to be hit on the head with with the game, okay. And I tell you what, Monarch TV series does a has does it harder on my senses than working in a fucking drag bar <laughs> when every co-worker is cross-dressing is actually a transvestite mm-hmm. i feel more offended by this tv show than i did working in a fucking drag bar it's it's <laughs> wild i'm glad i brought that up now i completely forgot i used yeah. to work in a drag bar i forgot you used to work in a drug bar jesus I'm telling you there was like 20 barmen all all men dressed as women and then the stage performance yeah. were all men dressed as women and then the crowd <laughs> all either mixed as in mixed uh, like gay people and straight people because it was open to everybody yeah. it wasn't like 100 yeah. pure gay bar this this show that should be about primarily about monsters and right. mutos and godzilla is just like it has to insert all this crap into it yeah no wonder you, you found it really shocking considering <laughs> it was apple tv oh yeah okay. i will i do like the fact that kurt russell and his son get to work together in this that must be nice mm. do you know what i mean like that's good and, and the good they sort of go really well they're both playing the role really well they're both playing the same role just from different time periods. It's, it's yeah, believable it as well. I felt sorry. There's, there's two characters I felt sorry for. Kurt Russell's character and then mm-hmm. the, the analyst guy, Tim, because yes, the yeah, show, the show bad spends so much time shitting on him. But he's actually a nice... Oh, no. But it's the characters that they want to promote that are actually the shitheads. It's annoying because Tim's like, he's he knows his job. He's supposed to be intelligent, but there are times when, again, the, the, the writing and the dialogue makes him out to be a bit of a dumbass in, in certain scenes. And you're like, why? He, he knows what's going on. He knows the job. And in certain scenes, he's just, they don't ask him like his opinion. And it's just like, but why? He, he, he knows the job inside and out. What, one good example is when he, Tim meets Kate for the first time and he says, you're not in trouble. And I really liked that. I thought, oh, they're actually saying it. You're not in trouble. We just need to speak to you. And she runs off and causes a car accident and she runs away from the car accident. Or it's just, that's not what a normal person does. If you if, no. if a secret organization has approached you and found you and they're like, listen, you're not in trouble. Okay, I'm happy to listen to you. Then you run away. Then they catch you again. You put in a car, you cause a car crash because you're still fighting against the secret organization. Like, why isn't she, why isn't she scared? No, she's tough and strong. She causes the car to flip and she's just got like a little bit of ringing in her ears and she runs off. It's like, how the fuck is this believable? What a bitch. Yeah, exactly. And she ran away from her brother. She just wants to run away from everything. That's what I mean. She runs away and then she just yells at people. It's just, it's so irritating to watch. Yeah, it is. Because you just want to reach into the screen and say, what are you doing? Like, these people are either trying to help you or trying to explain something to you. Like, stop it. <laughs> Even a girlfriend was trying to explain something to her. And she's like, no, I need to get on this bus. Mom is telling, mom is trying to explain things to her. She just puts the phone down on her mom. She's fucking horrible to her mom. Yeah. Stop it. Stop doing that. And then, and then she's horrible to her mom-in-law as well <laughs> by lying to her. Like, yeah, this is the, the worst qualities of these people. Who writes this and thinks this is okay? This is just, just terrible. She's. I think she, she's. She's. The, I think she's. Now that I've spoken about it, I think she's worse than me. Probably. They, it's, they're in me anyway. competition. They're in competition. Definitely. Do you know where that? Do you know the woman who plays Kate? Do you know where you've seen her from before? No. The last Fast and the Furious movie. Oh God. She's like right. the hacker character. She's got the, the MacGuffin thing. Of course. Okay. Yeah, so. All right. Anyway, I don't think there's any other characters we can rag on. So let's focus on. No. Let's focus on so, Kurt Russell's. I like Kurt. how he stayed in the nursing home after they. Yeah, I didn't like that. And I thought he. I didn't like I that. He had adventures and stuff, but no, he was just stuck there for the rest of his life. But I don't get why they did that. Like why he was just sat there and then just contempt with just being there. 
Very strange. But yeah, there's, there's just there's like a, a jump cut, and he's and he's done it. That's another twenty years of yeah. his life lost. On top of the fact that he's jumped forward in time, but the show does point out two times. Oh, why is he so uh, young looking? He should be like ancient. And I thought, mm. okay, they're doing it twice to let you know that they have thought about it. And he is playing an older character, but Kurt Russell is actually younger. But then you find out that he went forward in time. It's like, oh shit, that's actually really yeah. interesting. I did because I was thinking, oh, did he? Because I knew about the you know the alternate world where all the mutos come from and stuff like the that. And I down. thought, did he go? Yeah, the, basically the upside down. I thought, did he go there? Did he discover some sort of weird fountain of youth thing? Did that what is that what's slowing his age or something? I I didn't think this would happen, so I was like, oh, that's quite interesting. That's actually quite a good little twist they've done there. That's, mm, yeah, so that's American cool. TV shows are very good at threading secret things into Project Paperclip and all the, all the nefarious things they did, or the secret things <laughs> they did after World War Two with the CIA. They're yeah. good, at, you know, inserting. Oh wait, well, in this in this universe they had the Mutos, and in this one we're in Stargate and we're, we're funneling money into the stargate program and in this one it's we're, we're launching more rockets into space and it's for mankind yeah. kind of thing right there's elements of truth into all this they're right. just slowly trying to like prep us all right but here's where we're going to jump off and talk a little bit about one of the other movies a little bit okay when they're in the upside down mm. is that the same thing as the one that king kong gets into in godzilla um, versus king kong and use the ships is that the same it can't be the same thing because time travel is not a factor no, they mentioned the fact that that is somewhere in between their sort of world and then it's slightly sort of above what their existing, their, their existing world was. I think that's what she, she did mention that. One of the, I think it was either Keiko or somebody right. mentioned that when they were walking through the jungles or whatever. So, so the Upside Down in TV show is like, a, is like you say, an in-between place, but the yeah, King Kong yeah. place is a physical space inside the Earth. I think so, yeah. Okay. I think that's what's, what they're trying to sort of go with. Okay, yeah, because there's no time travel shenanigans. But they keep talking no, about no. holes into the centre of the Earth, and I'm like, well, are these time travel holes, or are these physical holes? Because it seems that they, they keep bringing up different things. Yeah, that. I like the fact that it's it's dealing with something other than a multiverse sort of thing. So I like the fact that it's, it's playing around with something different other than like, it's a multiverse or yeah. something bullshit like yeah, that. It's, or a por- it's a portal to another world that's different than ours, but the same. And I hate that sort of, it's, it's been played out a lot. I didn't, I didn't hate it, but it's been played out a, a lot recently. So I, I've grown to fucking hate it. Okay, okay. Well, the TV show has that. It is, like they say, it's an in-between, but the Kong movie isn't, an- yeah, yeah, okay. I can see the difference yeah. then. Yeah. So the other thing is that none of these characters are in the movies except Godzilla mm. either yeah so yeah. it's certainly cherry picking certain events to get to I get. did think at first I thought the dad was in Godzilla 2014 but it wasn't the same character I was like oh that's disappointing did you, I thought it might have been the same character is that because he's is that because he's Asian you got him mixed up yeah yeah basically yeah uh, that's probably that's what, that's what you're talking happened. about <laughs> Ken, Ken Watabe's character yeah okay yeah, they do look. I just similar. thought, yeah, I just thought, oh, they probably couldn't afford him. But then I realised that it's, oh, it's not the same fucking character, so it would have been actually a bit more tying into the series and the film than if it was the same character. But I guess they didn't go for that direction. Sure. The only character that is tied in is Bill Randers, which is John Goodman's character. Yeah, which is he's in Skull touch. Island. Yeah. Because of the t- in the TV show, where they show him losing his equipment during the spider attack, in the movie, yeah. you don't actually see what he gets up to. Yeah. So there is another spider that pushes him away and he has to run far and then somehow he gets back so it's open to interpretation as to how authentic it yeah. is but at least they watched that movie it looks like they watched that movie and thought okay this is how we set up the other things in the TV show right? yeah because he I like, dies I like the movie. Kelly Titan yeah he does yeah do you remember he gets so. the camera and he's like clicks it by accident he's like oh yeah God. and then you can see his camera flash inside the, the, the belly of the lizard yeah what a cheesy way to die so if you watch it in chronological order it's like Oh, tonally, this doesn't work. He adopted a <laughs> Japanese boy, and he's yeah. he's outgoing and adventurous. And then Skull Island is a little bit comic, and he's like, "Oh shit, that's, yeah. that's his fate." Right? Yeah. Which you find out from Kurt Russell's character when he wakes up afterwards <laughs> from traveling through time. Oh, oh, Bill Randers dead. Oh, and uh, his girlfriend's well, not the girlfriend, but it's a love triangle. So he was trying to bang her. Yeah, it's a weird love triangle. Yeah. But she's gone as well. You know? Yeah. I knew, I knew she would come back. I know. She was just there, and I was like, oh look, she's not aged. Right, because they don't. But I knew as well. I was like thinking, oh, they're gonna go. They're gonna be stuck down there for a little bit, and they're gonna come up, and some years are gonna have passed. Yeah, that's gonna in the upside down. Yeah. She spends fifty days there, so that means it's fifty years. Each day is a year, I think. Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Right, because at the end, 
they, they, they do a time jump two years later, don't they? Yeah. It looks like they've only been there for two days. Yeah, it's like 2017 when they come back up or something. Right. Or so 2018, I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Still not present day. Yeah. And did you think that Kurt Russell would die? I did. If, unless he is dead, but I thought they would offer. I don't f- yeah, I don't think he's dead, though, is he? He's, still, he's going to be alive still. They're going I to guess do another so. time jump and he's going to pop, pop up again. Yeah, probably. To. I just hope... For the, if they're going to do obviously they're going to do another season I, I, I'm, I'm assuming if it's successful enough I just hope they can get better writers or something tone down some of those younger characters because they need to just I don't know stop being so frigging annoying and stop moaning all the time yeah they moan too way too much in the context of the show you got you know Gojia and the other movie Gojia. shows Gojia it's like you should be you should be in awe of what you've just seen that you survived yeah you should be like, wow, what's yeah. that's just like sucking up electricity and like killing things. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's what it reminded me as well. When they, when they crash into the, the snowy place, another character that I liked was the pilot, yeah. Kurt, Russell's, Kurt Russell's friend. I liked the pilot and he died. And I was like, oh man, why did he die? He was cool. I, yeah. I like that guy. Instead, they're just like, no, you go your way and I'll go my way. Yeah. Ooh, it's so annoying. In the middle of like, the fucking Arctic environment, they're like, you're stealing like, we just crashed. I was like, yeah, your volume just got louder. Are you closer to, have you got a mic? I've got a mic. Yeah, here somewhere. There. So, so you're, Maybe using, it's you're using that mic for recording? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how that'll come out in the in the video. Okay, do you want to do you want to jump around with the with the actual Godzilla part? Should we talk about Godzilla? Well, 2014? No, no, no. The the TV show and then use it to intersect with the movies. Yeah, yeah, we can okay. do, yeah. So the the TV show is kind of clever with how they use Godzilla because you can't overdo it because he's established no. it with doing certain things in the movies. So mm. you get him in the flashback and that's, have you, do you remember where he approaches the nuclear bomb? Yes. That got memed to fuck because it looks like a, a microphone and people were talking about how Godzilla <laughs> was on a podcast. It, it, the way it's cut, it looks like a microphone. Yeah. And uh, I do like the fact that they try and nuke it immediately and then he just disappears. Yeah. So they think that he's been vaporized somehow. But I suppose that would be a natural reaction, wouldn't it? You would, right. If he's gone, yeah. he's vaporized. Yeah. But in the movies where they show you all the secret agent stuff and the blackout, uh, the blacked out so sort of documents you see Godzilla yeah. rise up in the water and it's the exact mm. it's the exact thing so the show is tying it into the even the credits of the movie yeah I like show that you. this is the moment in the 50s that the titles alluded to and you get to see mm. it. it's the same bomb same bomb name and everything yeah. it's like yeah oh, okay so this so this, we're now talking about some of the plus points as well with the TV show where they thread in it threads mm. itself into the movies so when the new there's good attention to detail yeah definitely so, so the new Kong and you can't have him in the TV show again for, for ages. He turns up in Africa where no one's around yep. and he doesn't fight a kaiju. He's just following that, that beacon. Yeah. Right, trying to figure out what it is. And then I'm guessing he was just asleep in the desert or something. I don't understand why he was there. I was like, right. why is Godzilla there? Was but, he actually okay. under the mountain or was he using one of those tunnels? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not really clear what yeah. he was doing there. He just was just there. Taking dormant and maybe asleep or having I don't know that's what they must do maybe but then you do see him have an actual kaiju fight it's in the upside down that's their way of getting yeah. around it and giving you a little, little bit of Godzilla action but yeah. then why, why did he, oh yeah they called they called a titan to come and he was the one yeah. that responded to the call yeah. that's how they could escape from the upside down right, yeah. okay, I just answered me my guess is yeah my guess is he's he's sort of I don't know he, he's obviously he's sentient for some you know he's, he's got intelligence or something to degree so he's just stopping other monsters from coming out into our world, basically. It's just it would seem that he is trying to prevent stuff yeah. like that, or he's trying to balance be a balance basically yeah. to that sort of thing. I'm guessing that must be it, it, what I interpret it, what I'm seeing on the screen anyway, to what, what's going on with Godzilla. Mm-hmm. The, and in the first movie, they don't sort of understand him yet. They think, okay, this is a big monster, it's gonna kill us. But there's a point in the yeah. movie where they just start following it on its yeah. way back to San Francisco. And they don't yeah. fire at it. They don't shoot it. Yeah, down, they're, they're just, just following because Godzilla isn't doing anything. He isn't, he isn't antagonizing anyone. Yeah, he's not attacking them purposely or trying to destroy ships and stuff. He's just heading to the location where the other Muto is. Right. And when when okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the characters in the first movie. The Ken Watabe character, I can't remember his name. Let me look it up. It is uh, Ishiro Sidazawa. There you go, Doctor Ishiro. Sidazawa. Oh yeah, yeah. I like that actor. But he's playing the role of the Asian man who knows more culturally and is just explaining shit yeah. to the Americans who are supposedly ignorant, which is understandable. You see a big fucking monster, you're just like, we've got to kill that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, yeah. don't kill it because he's on our side. Yeah, but how do you know? 
well, well, it's 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 his uh, it's his pronouns. His pronouns just like are unfriendly. A, nature, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the whole thing about nature's balance and stuff. He's just balancing. Yeah, and he's like, let them fight. Fuck <laughs> Mike. All right. Right. But I do remember one of the criticisms of that movie, directed by Gareth Edwards, is that you don't actually see a lot of Godzilla. It's, that's a good point. You don't. You see the yeah. The other random monsters it felt like a, a movie of two halves again like written by two because like when brian cranston died in that movie you're like oh, okay and then his shitbag son took over the role basically of his i didn't his story uh, i, I was like mind okay his ship is air quotes son at least he had a purpose because when you compare it to the other movies and the other characters in across the tv show and movies he's actually yeah. a pretty good character he's got a purpose he's okay yeah, he's, he's all right. He's all right. He's, he's like the baseline. He's like everything we could measure everybody else off. Well, actually, actually, he's he's way better than any of the present day characters in Monarch. Right. Just like the, well, the, well, the kids anyway. The kids. I'd say the adults are, are more tolerable than yeah, for sure. the kids. He's he's military trained, so he's going to be a bit stoic. He's going to do his yeah. duty and get the job done. But stylistically, uh, Godzilla's the same. So that's a plus point. Obviously, you can't have yeah. Godzilla and TV show looking different, but yeah. it's all to obf obfuscate Godzilla, like hide Godzilla so that you focus on these human characters that are, like I say, they're okay. It's a shame about Brian Can Cranston's character, but I wouldn't know how to take him any further. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's kind of shocking because he just come off, he just came off that TV show. Didn't Breaking Bad, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So you think he's going to be, oh, the main character of, of the new Godzilla franchise, I guess. Yeah. And then the the character characterizations of the of the new characters in, in the following movies just get progressively worse and worse. And so yeah. when I take a step back and I think about the characters across all of the entire franchise, a lot of them are mm. fucking lame. The only consistent character that's written well is Godzilla. He has no lines. <laughs> yeah. Essentially Charlie can, Chaplin in his own movie. He can express more emotion with his uh, CGI'd face than an actual real human being. Right. But it's so weird, but it's so consistent. And one of the reviews that I read about the Monarch TV show was that it says it has the feel of a summer blockbuster movie. Take that for what you want. It's like, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Mm. Because it's, it's the same. When you get to Godzilla vs. Kong, it's essentially a Transformers movie. That the yeah. look and feel that you had in the first one with Gareth Edwards is gone yeah. by the time it's the third one. Yeah, It's just Transformers. It's just big... Like they're not robots, but they're just big creatures just kicking the shit yeah, out of Yeah, it did get progressively a bit more silly. Like, Godzilla 2014, pretty serious, tonally wise, and yeah. quite good. And then it just gets a little bit, eh, well, as, the, as the movies go on. I feel like King of the Monsters wants to be serious. Because yeah. it's about end of the world, and the characters are like about saving the world. Everyone's got a, like an opinion about how to save the world. It's like, okay, that's kind of mm. serious stuff. But none of the characters are likeable. Or real? No. The only one that I, I would think is real is uh, Dr. Mark Russell, the guy who's Millie Bobby Brown's father. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he hates Godzilla yeah. at the beginning, and then he's like, we've got to save Godzilla. Yeah. That's that's the only person Daughter. who goes through any sort of growth. I've seen that movie, what the one when it came out. I haven't seen it in ages, so I'll have to it's refresh so and watch that. Do you remember when you watched Star Trek, and there's a thing that happens on screen, one character says something, and the next character follows on, it's like they've chopped that person's dialogue, the first person dialogue into two, and they shared it across two people because they're finishing each other's sentences. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's a radiation issue. Oh, yes. Then we should stay away, says the second person. Okay. <laughs> then let's do that, says the third person. They're just yeah, I hate that sort of... Right? I hate that. When, they, when characters get turns and say in lines, I'm yes. like, oh, I don't like that. I That's don't like it. It's not natural. Monster. It's not natural either. It's just... Because no one, no one in a group speaks like this. It's just ridiculous. Right. And there's... There's things that the Chinese character, the one from, she's from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, but there's a Chinese woman in yeah. King of the Monsters. And there's an American guy saying something ridiculous. And she follows it on with some Eastern mysticism sort of line. And then it's someone else's line. It's all cobbled together. And it's telling you about the story. It's not showing you. Star Trek did it a little bit within its limitations, but this is a movie. And I just yeah. expected, I just expected to be, to be shown more I wish I had some examples of the dialogue, but you just have to watch it. And yeah, I haven't seen it in ages. I'm still, from each other. I'm still going through. Like I'll be watching probably Skull Island next because that's the next one. I think Crying Out. It's the second know, one. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that's the second yeah, one. Yeah. Basically, I want to get to, to that watch. in a minute because because that's my yeah. favorite. That's my favorite of the of the movies. Oh, the Skull Island one. Yeah, Skull Island. I'll, I'll, I'll get into it in a minute. But so let me let me finish with this and then okay. And then do you know? Do you remember the mother, Millie Bobby Brown's mother, the one who creates yeah. the supercomputer that can speak to the Mutos? Of course, yeah. Right. Of course, she did. <laughs> at the end of yeah, of, yeah. 
but don't forget her husband created it and then they destroyed it so she had to redo it again right she she's going to die in this movie and at the end she's like long live the king and someone else said it early in the movie but i don't think they were together and i'm like why are you saying this why are you putting <laughs> godzilla on a pedestal and saying he's the king I, I, yeah it's a weird sort of like affection that we've that the characters have developed but the movie hasn't justified that godzilla is the king other than to say well, he's the top predator. He's the he's the, he's the alpha predator. Remember, you can't just say yeah, top yeah. predator. You got to say alpha predator now for these super monsters, and and that's yeah. it. And so now that Ghidorah is in charge, he's the alpha predator, and so it's the new king. And they're, they're treating it like a monarchy. Yeah, some sort of high yeah, some hierarchy like sort of thing. Well, yeah. it's a movie's way yeah. of explaining how the relationships work with these with these monsters, and it just turns out yeah. to be true. Oh, right, you got to have the, you got to have one rules the others but but if you do too much damage to the humans then he'll kill you because at the end you've got you've got the flying one and you've got the mammoth and then you've got the one from the first movie back well it's another of that yeah. species and they're all just like they're literally bowing dude the flying one is literally like lowering its wings to bow to godzilla exactly how <laughs> humans would interpret a king queen monarchy system yeah yeah because they talk about mothra oh she's the queen how do you know yeah exactly out of all the species that probably exist like how would they even work right oh yeah. man yeah oh there's a note here the woman who played the uh the mother of millie barbie brown whose character i guess mrs yeah. russell she said that the previous film focused on a father-son relationship okay king of the monsters focuses on a mother-daughter relationship and due to this the movie may pass the Bestial Test. Wow, thanks for that. That's that's what I needed. That's what I needed <laughs> what, from a Godzilla who, movie. Who, who wrote that? Is that just part of the synopsis or the that's review the, sort the actor of thing? Is saying, and that's what it's that's oh. what I've taken from Wikipedia. So, oh god. So that's a good thing. Oh. The movie's much better because it passes passes the Bestial Test. But I think a Godzilla would be an easy fucking way to pass the Bestial Test. Pass the Bestial Test anyway, because it's a movie. Could be a movie about fucking monsters kicking the shit out of monsters. You don't need to talk about yeah. that. Do you? But That's all I want in, in my monster movie, yeah. Right, okay. So, Skull Island. Skull Island, man. It's got a big cast. Yeah, so many big names from Marvel. Yeah, I looked at it. I've just I've pulled it up now. I'm like, my God, there's loads of people in this. Indeed. I can't even Do fit it on my screen. I've talked, there's loads. I've talked a lot. Do you want to say anything about this movie first? Oh, I've not seen it in ages. Oh, I watched okay. the trailer with, with Dawn because I was like, we're, gonna, we're watching it. And I'm like, we're going to watch the movies that are related to the Monarch series. And she's down, she's down for doing that. And so Skull Island was going to be the next one. She's not too keen on tom hiddleston so you he's know we're just right. gonna watch it anyway he's just, I, I, I like him he's, he's all right say yes he's written competently it gets a bit weird when yeah. he puts on the gas mask and pulls out the samurai sword and starts chopping up those bands in a stylistic yeah. like green smoke purple blood sort of framing yeah it's a bit weird like how can you see all those I, I, fucking monsters with that sword and what happened to the guy who gave you the sword exactly yeah but again though this is a film that i've probably seen once and I watched the trailer again, and the trailer, like, it, 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 the film still holds it. It looks really good. And I'm like, oh, this, I'm quite looking forward to watching this film again. And the cast is, like, again, like I say, is massive. And I think they all do pretty much a good job from what I remember. Like, yeah. like Brie Larson is she's good fine. in this movie, and she's, she's, and Samuel, Tom Hilderson, John Goodman, John C. Riley, and then that Corey Hawkins, who was in the Star Wars stuff before. Was this before that, or? During, I can't remember. Corey. Corey Hawkins is the black guy. I think he's in. He's in Star Wars. He's in, he was Force Awakens. He was the. Do you remember Force Awakens? He was going to be like. He was holding the lightsaber in a lot of the, sh the promotional shots. People were sort of figuring that he was going to take over the mantle of like the That's next big the Jedi. Same. But That's not the same. Black but guy. then it was. It's not the same one. Are you no, sure? You, you, you've shown your racism again. You've mixed up black. Again, people. I'm showing my racism again. Are you sure <laughs> it's not him? Yeah. Oh, it's not him. No, it's not him. Oh, it's not him. Well, he was in this movie. the white characters. That's really interesting. It is really interesting. I thought he was in this movie, though. <laughs> I did, honestly, I did genuinely think he was in this movie. Right. Damn. Okay. That, I am. It's ironic when, they, when people... It's ironic when people have confused Samuel Jackson for Denzel Washington in real life. <laughs> you know, when you did Man on Fire. I didn't do Man on Fire. What the fuck are you talking about? Whatever it was. I know, it was more, maybe Morgan Freeman. I can't remember, but anyway. And see, I'm getting confused now. Yeah, Morgan Freeman, Denzel Washington, Samuel L. They're all, you don't know what films they've done. They're all in the same films. Yeah, yeah. They, they were all in uh, the, the Shawshank Redemption. They all won the same Oscar for it. <laughs> they all stand up. Ah, okay, the reason why I like it, and this goes back into the, the Monarch TV show, is that because yep. it's a period piece, 
you can't add in all the woke shit so the characters have to be grounded to the 1970s just like yes. our, our favorite characters on the yes. tv show have to be grounded to the yes. 1950s <laughs> yes. once you put it to modern day it's just like yeah i'm a strong independent 11 year old girl you know i can do everything i hack computers and write programs and yeah. create code exactly you lose <laughs> you actually lose the believability and remember this is a fucking movie about giant monsters i know you believe that more you believe in them more than the actual characters that are being represented on the screen about their their capabilities and their so yeah everything. yeah there's so many good characters well not good characters but there's so many like you've got scientists you've got the sas you've got the soldiers you've got a little bit yeah. taken from aliens the way the characters mm. sort of have like a relationship so you've got this you at least you've got like uh, a level of uh what's the word variety diversity in yeah fact. that's going well, representation on. representation representation <laughs> with all these characters because it is a multinational sort of force that's going there because exactly the, because i like those sort of films as well because they're going to an island it's like a big expedition thing and mm. i like that sort of narrative that goes to that that it, it creates an interesting dynamic like you say with all the characters all the different nationalities it's very reminiscent of like aliens where it's like you get a brief introduction to each of all these characters and they have their own character their own personalities their own histories and in a split second of like just having introductions to these characters you know more about them there's more characterization with those than there are in the monarch tv mm. series with like the young kids that are in that show right there's more yeah <laughs> believability and like you feel more connected to those characters than them there is, there is one character that does stand out in a bad way and it's that random chinese lady who looks pretty throughout the entire movie dressed as a oh. 1950s sort of home ho homemaker american homemaker and she yeah. just has dialogue you yeah. don't learn anything about her she just has it's over there let's go oh that's good you know that's clearly that character is designed for the chinese market yeah just like yeah, the I've seen her. king of the yeah. monsters with the chinese woman but she's more famous it's just so you can get an entry point into china she doesn't do anything yeah she's not in any <laughs> danger she makes it through the movie unscathed, not a nail chip, <laughs> not a scratch on her face, nothing. And you've got those American soldiers getting the shit kicked out of them. It's so weird. But I like the fact that because it's a big expeditionary force, you can create... So, for example, all the helicopters get destroyed, right? They all somehow don't see this fucking giant monkey. They keep saying monkey. I know it's not a monkey, and you know it's not a monkey. But they all get destroyed, all of them. So that's it. Now they're on yeah. foot. And over the course of the movie, they don't explain who all the survivors are. So at one point, Samuel L. Jackson's like, you fry this beast, and there's a guy with, like, just spontaneously, there's a guy with a flamethrower with that, just like, <laughs> burning shit. I like that. Yeah. Because you can call on these reserves of, like, throwaway characters to do interesting things just for a few seconds before they get eaten. <laughs> they're, they're the red shirts of the show. <laughs> so, I mean, do you remember the guy who has all the, the explosives on him, and he's trying to get the skull crusher to eat, and the skull crusher's like, and he just whacks him with the tail, and he goes flying off, and he hits the cliff. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to watch this film again. You don't remember? You just remind, yeah. You're reminding me of these scenes oh. that I, I sort of, they, are, they, they stick in my mind, but I can't remember the full. Okay, but, but uh, he's like, he's doing a very, he's doing a very noble thing, and you can see him, he's shitting himself because he knows he's going to die, except he just... He didn't count on the tail swing to like launch him. Ooh. And uh, when Samuel Jackson is going, he's trying to get somewhere to get his like, because he's a colonel and he's trying to get yeah. the major and the major is by himself. Do you remember that guy, Coleman? Yes, it's, it's Samuel so. Jackson's whole point is to get to this other part of the island. So then there's some also disagreement amongst the characters. And then because, oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. because Kong yeah, yeah. supposedly kills Coleman, he's like, yeah. well, I'm gonna kill Kong. Yeah. Right, that guy, have you ever seen him before? Uh, it's wing or something yeah i think i've seen he was before. in a film called dead man walking yes he's been in a lot of Paddy different things Considine. Yeah. okay have you seen dead man walking no i i don't think you'll i don't think dawn will like it right okay but it's it's a horror it's not horror flick it's a slasher flick from the perspective okay. of the one doing the slashing okay right and he, okay. he's in it as this brother who got tortured and um bullied by these by these men and sexually assaulted okay but he's essentially in, oh. in this movie also a dead man walking because he's all by himself in Monsterland, and then he gets killed in the most brutal way. Yeah, I tell you something. When I first watched, when I first watched Kong, Samuel L. Jackson's character, I was like, why is he such an asshole to Kong? Because yeah, they went into his land. It's like he can't well, yeah, accept exactly. the fact that huh? yeah, exactly. Like they, he goes in. He's, it's just his uh, reasoning is just to he wants to take him down, doesn't he? he wants to kill him or right, whatever. Because he's he's in the shit. He wants to stay in the shit because yeah. he doesn't want to be. He doesn't want Vietnam to stop. But you're going into someone else's home. They get upset, and therefore it's their fault that you're in their home, knocking over their furniture, right? Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, exactly. But it, the way he dies is just like in that shark movie, where it's all of a sudden... No, oh, yeah. Yeah, die, you son of a... Just yeah, it was, the, uh, it was Deep Blue Sea, wasn't yeah, it? Where he's it. making a big speech, and he just gets chomped and then taken down. Right. 
But if you want to go balls deep into this, the original Kong, the original creation of the Kong was basically a representation of the black man, okay? The big, the big black man from Africa who's coming to New York and he's going to destroy civilization. And in the process, he's taking the white woman. One of the reasons why uh, weed was, was illegal, made illegal in America, was that it was, by, it was because black people smoked it. And they said that that's the reason. If, if we allow all these black people to smoke weed, they'll take our women. So there's all mm. these parallels. So the character of Kong is, is, is a racist archetype, or it's a yeah, metaphor yeah. for racism and the ignorance of Western culture on, say, the African continent. But me loaded with all of this inside my head, I'm like, why is Samuel L. Jackson fighting another black man? Why are the brothers, <laughs> oh why are the brothers fighting? My God. That, that's what confused me because I'd read the, the theory on Kong. Shouldn't you have a white guy who's equally ignorant? So then because, okay. because the original Kong movies don't, they're not, they're, they're it, black and white ones. Don't have these kinds of characterizations where it can be more developed. Here in this movie, you could have had it play out and therefore the white guy is crime. wrong. You know, if you wanted it'd to really like, make it woke. Like hate crime, it'd be like, no, you can't have a white man attacking Kong. I know, I know, but if you really wanted to make it woke, I'm now playing devil's advocate, then you would have had a okay. white guy, an evil white guy, sort of mm. trying, to, trying to beat up the big black man kind of The evil story. white man, yeah. But course. it's not, it's Samuel Jackson. Yeah. It's so confusing. Oh. Even He even does it in Django. He's like, China, he's, he hates the other black guy. Oh, I know. Tom. And they're saying the N-word and everything. And it's really weird because the brothers are fighting. There's no solidarity in, in the brothers. And this is the second time Samuel Jackson is playing a brother who's in conflict with another brother. Anyway. Stop saying, stop saying brothers, you sound so white. <laughs> I'm, trying to use, I'm trying to use their nomenclature in that. Okay. In, in, from America. Yeah. I, I liked it, period piece. It's fun. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how they connect season two to Kong Skull Island. It'd be very interesting to see where they go because you just see them sort of walk off from the hangar that they've just appeared from, from, you know, the upside down area. And it's, it's fast forwarded obviously to 2017 from 2015. So time's gone forward. Uh, they're now working for that different corporation, not Monarch. Uh, and they're on Skull Island already. Because it obviously it pans away from them and it shows it's Skull Island. You're like, okay, where, it, where are they taking this now? Mm. But isn't that corporation in uh, Kong versus Godzilla? Good. Is it? I think it they're might mentioned, be. Yeah. They're mentioned in that they must movie. have. Yeah. It must be because they obviously it's in Monarch. They seem to be quite good at sort of tying in all the films and all the yeah, references. Yeah. So it, I guess it would be. One last thing, yeah. by the way, about Skull Island is the movie actually has an ending. John C. Wiley goes home, so you've got that emotional payoff. No other movie has. Oh yeah. Any sort of decent closure. Yeah. There we are. I'm I'm looking forward to watching this film again. It's been a while. Yeah, it's my favorite one. I love it. Unlike King of, unlike <laughs> fucking Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah, that's probably the least favorite one I'm looking forward to watching. I'm like, mm, when I saw the trailer, watch it because it's connected. But mm. trailer looked fucking boss, especially when Kong is jumping off the building with that fucking axe, and he's yeah. like, gonna give the kibosh on, on Godzilla. It's like, oh, that's fucking awesome. And then I just forgot to go to the cinema to watch it. Right? I was so pumped. Yeah. The whole movie is is aimed towards that climatic fight. The first movies are not. They're just more yeah. style, mystery style or uh, apocalyptic, you know, like War, not War of the Worlds, Independence Day. Like what's happening? Yeah. You've got these little fights and then you've got the big fight. But this, where is this? It's focused on the big fight because you've got the Mecha Godzilla oh, yeah, as yeah. well to to tie all the story threads together because Millie Bobby, maybe Millie Bobby Brown has got stuff to do. Yeah. I think she was in that film because like obviously shit hot from Stranger Things. Just like we're all struggling in this Godzilla film. Right. But she has less to do in this movie. Yeah. She just finds the podcaster and then accidentally get shipped to Japan, uh, shipped to Hong Kong. And then they're there yeah. just to throw the alcohol on the computer so that Mecha Godzilla cannot, cannot win. Just, just like quickly, because it's not connected at all, but have you seen, are you going to watch Minus One? Like the Godzilla Minus One? I will, yeah. Because that looks like a more serious tone and completely like on the, in the old style of like an original sort of Godzilla movie. Yes. They seem to have gone back to the roots and it's a different take on it, I think, obviously. Yes. I was annoyed that I didn't go to the cinema to watch it. It seemed to like, it seemed to you'd be in the cinema and then out and gone, like in the blink of an eye. Because I was like, oh, it's, it's gone already. Like, damn. I read but, only yesterday that that movie is now the third most successful language, foreign language movie in America, American history. Wow. That's, that's already third. Oh, huh? okay. People really want a good story. And I only hear great things about this movie, the budget and the characterizations. Yeah, I heard uh, it was yeah, well received, definitely. Mm -hmm. I wanna, that's why I went to watch it, because it was like, there's nothing but praise for it when it came out. Yeah. So. With the Kong versus Godzilla movie, you've seen it, right? Yes. Okay, if you watch this and then watch the first one, you can see a huge difference in how they treat the, the environment that everything is set in. 
because people die, people get punished in the Gareth Edwards one. You can feel the, the loss of other people. But this, they have yeah. a fight on an aircraft carrier, which is fucking cool because they both climb on the aircraft carrier and they're just like punching the shit out of each other. And then the aircraft carrier gets destroyed, but you don't see any clips of people like going, or there's no, there's no human death toll attached to it. That's why it's like a Transformers yeah. movie or a Marvel movie. Death, death is not an issue now. It's just the spectacle, whereas the earlier ones were all about the consequences and the death and the what. Yeah, yeah. It's like every single movement that the monsters make has a consequence because they're just going through buildings and people and <laughs> everything. Right. It's we're just it's just a playpen for these two yeah. for these big live action figures. Yeah. Do you remember the tribe from the Skull Island movie? They find an indigenous yes. tribe, right? In in this movie, which I feel is actually more of a King Kong movie than a Godzilla movie, because the story is more interesting. You know that little girl who, the girl, who's deaf, and she does the sign language. Yeah. She teaches Kong, right? They say that she's the last of their tribe. That tribe gets wiped out in a comic that's like attached. It's like part of the MonsterVerse media. Oh. Another kaiju Damn. goes to Skull Island and tries to fight yeah. Kong, but in the process, just wipe out all those tribes. So that she's the oh last God. one. I'm like, that's really fucking depressing. It is, you yeah. Think about it. And you just <laughs> got to go by herself. But it's trying to create... Damn. But it's... I feel like it's forcing an emotional response, an emotional weight, and so that you have this relationship yeah. between Kong and the girl. Yeah. But it, but it comes out of nowhere, sadly. Mm. The Kong part of the movie has potential where he's trying to find out the mystery of his people. Like, I'm actually interested yeah. in that. And the technology to get those spaceships into the middle of the earth yeah and the characters yeah, they're, yeah. they're kind of sensible it's it's all the Godzilla related stuff that is just more transformery so mm. and none of those characters are in the next movie you know there's another one what's the other movie well, let me out. find it there's another what connected to this lot yes I've got three browsers um, it's bad enough having three tabs I suppose that would make I'm surprised it's not I mean it's only just finished up the season so obviously I don't think they've, they've not really confirmed a season two yet but I'd assume they probably will do another one just the way it ended i know there's a lot of shows out there in the past that have done the same thing where they just ended and then that's it you sort of like left disappointed or you're left like with answers mm. well, well questions sorry answers it's called godzilla x kong the new empire oh yeah i have heard of that right i guess they're going to find more of king kong's people and then there's another evil kong of some kind of course a little bit but no millie bobby brown oh okay she's too characters. busy doing stranger things who knows yeah. you can see the regression of the characters at least in the first one where she appears she's sort of like upset about what her mom and dad are doing yeah and there's conflict there like who should she who which side should she go on the dad or the, or the mother and then in this yeah. one she just accidentally 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 gets taken on a journey and then at the end is reunited with her dad who just happens to be in hong kong oh yeah, and she's yeah. there by accident that's it there's no story at all. There's no insight. Yeah, it just ends. Yeah. yeah. I have to talk about the Hong Kong fight because technically I can see where they fought, where the movie shows it. <laughs> I can see it across the bay. Oh, really? Yeah, right there. Hey! And I've got to say that the geography of the island is accurate where they're fighting. And I would say 10% of the buildings, 15, no argument can be made for 20, are real buildings. Yeah from the Hong Kong okay. skyline but the rest of them does that like does that help when you're watching it does that like have a do you have like a connection you can you go oh that, can you relate to it a bit more oh. does it feel a bit more well I know where they're fighting tangible, a bit more the, connection the thing is yeah some of the buildings have I mean just like in this setup now we've got we've got this blue neon outline for our video right yeah okay the movie says oh well just because a couple of the buildings have these neon en uh, edges that means every building has neon edges and it, it's not <laughs> like that and they keep replicating the buildings. So I'd say about 20% of them are actually real. And the fortress, okay. where that massive, where the corporation has its bunker in, in the peak, that's not real. That doesn't exist, of yeah. course. It's just CGI'd in. Of course. And then yeah. what, what, it, what, what it happens is that you see Hong Kong from, from a bird's eye view, unrealistic, the way they're clambering around and everything. And then sometimes the shots jump to the street level view and it's like they've taken one street in Hong Kong and used it as a template <laughs> for all the other okay. streets because you've got all this signage okay. and Hong Kong has a reputation for being for having more neon than Las Vegas and during the 80s and early 90s that was that was true there was so much neon yeah there. but the problem is it, it's not here anymore they've slowly the government has slowly sort of put these rules in place where they have to take down the old neon signs and so when photographers come here oh, and they're looking no. for that vibe, they have to go to a few specific places and then do like a really tight crop of whatever they're shooting to get that background that is evocative yeah. of Hong Kong's history. 
it's gone. But this movie plays it up, just right. like Doctor Strange does, where they have street food and bamboo everywhere. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's not Hong Kong at all. But there's a moment where these people, and it's in the trailer, you can see these people running down these steps and there's this there's this uh, famous building called Monster. It's called Monster Building or Monster E because it's shaped like a capital E with these three buildings. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, and then there's two here. So it's so there's five actually. And lots of movie, okay. movie studios go there. And I used to live behind it. So you'd see the studio set up. It's where they film Transformers when they're fighting along the air conditioners. Remember the CIA guy and... Uh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. The guy from... I can't remember his name. But you know who we're talking about? Vaguely. He, because Vaguely. when they stopped using the crazy guy for the Transformers movies... Oh, who is his name? God damn. Tip of my tongue. I can see him. Andy... I'll edit this out. I'm going to... Oh, Andy Andy's oh, Andy no, Circus. No, no, no. Not that. Mark Wahlberg. Boom. There we go. Not Andy. Mark Wahlberg. Bloody hell. That's far stretch from right. Andy. <laughs> and Shia, Shia Le, was the crazy one. So he, oh, she, they got rid of him and they yes. replaced him for Mark Wahlberg. When Mark Wahlberg is fighting on the air conditioning yeah, yeah. units with the CIA guy, that's where they filmed it. And there's a scene in Godzilla movie where these people are running down as the building is collapsing. But that is not over there. It's over there. So they're fucking up with the geography. <laughs> Does my head in. I know how well, people... Only live. you would know that. Well, of course. Only you and everybody that lives there no, would know this. It's the same with... It's always sunny in Philadelphia. The people in Philadelphia are like, but they've got the geography of the city wrong just to make the story work. And that's what they did here. And I'm like, yeah. there's no fucking way. Although my view is pretty good, there's no fucking way that fight could have could have played out the way it had over there. But hey, it's a yeah. summer blockbuster spectacle movie. So you know, evil CEO, robot <laughs> Godzilla. Why the fuck not? Have at it. <laughs> of course, robot Godzilla. Yeah, Mecha Godzilla. So overall, though, for the Monarch series, I mean, how are you feeling about it? What do you think? Well, they haven't renewed. They haven't renewed a season two. There's no word of it. So maybe yeah. maybe they're not happy with it. But if it's a one-off, okay, fine. It's an interesting distraction from the movies, which yeah. also an interesting distraction from doing anything of productive value. Like they are yeah. a time waste. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame because there is potential there. It's a shame. Well, yeah. Do you have anything else to say about Monarch or the movies that you haven't watched in ages? I don't know. I'm looking forward to watching <laughs> definitely Skull Island. Uh, the the other ones maybe. Not so much, but obviously I'll watch them because they are related. I'm hoping there's a season two because even though this did have problems and it did, especially with the three younger characters from 2015, I do feel like there is some potential in the show and there are a lot of, there are more interesting characters on the good side than there are the bad. I feel like Kurt Russell's character is good. I feel like Tim's good. Uh, is it, uh, what's her name? Ke Keiko? She's going to be, a, she seems like a decent character. Yeah. The scene between where you first saw her and then you see Kurt Russell's character having to like, he's hiding behind a tree. He's talking to her. Like in, their, their dialogue together was very, very well done. Uh, like the emotion was there and stuff. And I, and I enjoyed that scene because it just felt like a, a good, like organically, like, I don't know, strong scene between those two characters. Like they've not seen each other for ages. And it was just a, a cool moment. And then you got like the, the idiots in the background looking with their mouths open, like. You, I'm glad you reminded <laughs> but me. Like, yeah. Because Kurt Russell's character. Yeah. He's all jokey and antagonistic until he meets yeah. her again. And it, he's playing he's acting that character like his son did he reverts yeah back yeah and it is a really good moment i'm glad you mentioned yeah. it because kate i thought she was going to say oh you're my grandma but of course the movie yeah exactly the yeah TV she show allows us to have moments say between the other characters where he's practically he's almost crying behind the tree because he's lost it further emphasizes yeah. the loss of life that he's incurred by jumping ahead yeah and she's still young yeah, and he, did, and he didn't expect to see her down there. He didn't expect that she was alive. He thought she was dead and gone, and that was it. So, right. yeah, it was a cool scene. I like that. I like more of that. If they do a season two, just more serious, cool stuff like that with, like, character development, cool interactions like that, interesting dialogue, more surprises about the actual monarch corporation or whatever, the, the government agency. Just all that sort of stuff is cool and interesting and they should build more upon that than the drama shit that we don't need we don't need yeah. angsty drama that it just has to, it has no place in a show like this this show could be really cool and interesting you've got like a elements of sci-fi and fantasy and everything wrapped in here and it's like use that like build on that because it'd be really they could really make a really cool show of this they've got the films as, as inspiration and as like background to like build on just use it i just don't understand like 
the drama, the CW shit drama that's sort of infused in there, unfortunately, which will not go away. I could watch an entire season two of Kurt Russell trying to get out of the Upside Down. It'd be more interesting. <laughs> yeah, that'd be like, way more interesting, building, man. Building up a way more interesting with Godzilla. So he comes back, comes back into season two or season three, <laughs> riding Godzilla like he's he's conquered all his demons. Uh, but seriously, what I like to yeah, the TV show, that'd be cool. something that you just reminded me, is that you are kind of like, is Monarch a good good thing or a bad thing? You don't know their allegiance, and even Kurt yeah. Russell's character, you think he's a good guy, but then he's trying to do bad things to to force certain situations. Mm. So there's a little bit of ambiguity there. If they were, if they are going to make a season two, yeah, I've got some notes here. What I'd like to see: this TV show could focus on what it's like to live with the monsters, not what it's like to live with black women who speak Japanese and are computer crackers and are lesbians, right? Yeah, you could focus on the idea that, like, only San Francisco is affected. Like, long term, we've only seen San Francisco get fucked up. Mm. And what is the react? What is humanity's reaction? They showed to living in a destroyed city. Yeah, they showed interesting. <clears throat> interesting elements of that yeah you know, with the the safety protocols and stuff like that they touched right. on it a little bit and they showed you little snippets and it, that was quite interesting because i was like oh that's cool they have an alert system they have like you've got to evacuate quickly to certain safe areas yeah. stuff like that's really cool it should it should focus more on the the human condition surrounding and have our surrounding the monsters and our reaction to the monsters what would it be like to live in harmony and in, in it because at some point yeah. that has to be the end game otherwise it's just total destruction or is godzilla just going to kill every fucking thing yeah. like a hepa filter <laughs> it's just gonna it's just gonna extract all the good from the bad and then you've just got what only good monsters and then we have to live with them like what are the long-term yeah. consequences what could the show allow us to do as a metaphor so like what do we live how do we live with climate change for example that show yeah, could exactly. be a representation of that what yeah. happens if san francisco is or well, even portland the streets of portland are literally melting in the summer now like what is it like to live on a, yeah. in a city like that do you leave do you stay there who stays there why leave mm. when do you leave florida is sinking into the ocean yeah right what do you do do you sell your house yeah ben shapiro says you should just sell your house but it's like who the fuck will you sell it to like they haven't thought about these things if you know that was florida is sinking yeah, exactly and like, yeah. who's gonna fucking buy an underwater house like there's so much you can do yeah. and not focus on these on these team dramas otherwise yeah uh da, 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 da. yeah by not focusing on it you're just allowing the cities to be convenient i say a ring like a boxing ring you're just allowing these cities to be come yeah. a boxing match uh, locale for the monsters to keep the seven yeah. shit seven bells yeah. out of each other and it's like okay move on what's the next city oh yeah. let's do london oh let's do moscow you know yeah what's the point yeah yeah so it's, it's got to be grounded yeah. and offer something more substance some substantive substantive substantiated substantial yeah there we go. yeah but those are my hopes anyway for season two like you i just i want that sort of serious tone more delve more into the monarch and then the other corporation and the relationships between the more tightly written characters than all the crappy drama and think about try and explain more of the the world where the monsters come from and stuff like that this, that's what i want this uh, japanese woman she's now having to adapt to a life 50 years in the future yeah like that is also thematically mm. going yeah. to fit with the idea of how do we adapt you could see it through her yeah. as a point of view character that's what i would hope first she's got to figure out though yeah. why she's got yeah why her son has got two 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 wives though you can do that now in japan yeah that's what i mean there's there's, there's stuff like that as well to sort of like go through there's so many different little things they could they could do yeah well this has been an interesting uh, side know. discussion it's a distraction away from our other series that we should be watching which is for all mankind yeah i'll get back on that i will yeah okay shall we leave it there yeah i think we've covered everything pretty Practically. much that's worth covering yeah